Hey everybody, welcome back to yet another video here on the Washington Football Maniacs channel. My name is Greg and welcome if you're new here. Welcome if you're not. Uh, if you're a repeat offender, thanks for joining us. Uh, please consider subscribing to this channel if you haven't already. Uh, I've tried to come out with uh, videos on a regular basis, at least three times a week. Uh, maybe Monday, Wednesday, and Friday if possible. Uh, sometimes every single day, and that might be true. As we get closer to the season and guess what we are getting closer to the season as of the recording of this video today is july the 18th and folks we are just a couple of weeks or so away from training camp can you believe it football is almost back which means of course uh it's kind of a downer that you know that that also means that summertime will start to to wind down which Boo! <laughs> I know a lot of people love summer. Um, I love hanging out by the pool, and uh, so yeah, you know that that's the um, I guess that's the bad thing. But other than that, um, you know the great thing here is that football is just right around the corner, and with that, hopefully a great season up ahead for the Washington Commanders. And yes, I'm wearing my Washington Redskins shirt today i know some people uh when i've worn this in the past some people are like that shirt needs to be a museum hey look redskins for life i proudly support this team all phases of their history man um i'm proud of this team and you know washington commanders washington football team washington redskins um you know, I'm a fan of it all, but hey, I've been a fan since like 1980, 1981, when I was like six years old, so there you go, man. But anyway, today I wanted to talk about, very quickly, wide receivers, but specifically their relationship with the quarterback. Now, you know, a lot of talk is going to be about the relationship that Carson Wentz is going to have with Terry McLaurin. You know, we talk about, you know, relationships uh, between wide receiver and quarterback. You know, in the history, you hear about um, guys like, you know, Jerry Rice, Joe Montana, or Jerry Rice and Steve Young. Um, you hear about uh, Steve Largent and, oh, uh, golly, um, maybe Jim Zorn um, and who was their other quarterback that was pretty popular back in the day. Oh, okay. Not a Seahawks fan, but, you know, I was actually a really big fan of Steve Largent, though. He was he was a great wide receiver. Um, but then you have, you know, uh, the Duper brothers with, with um, uh, Dan Marino. Um, the list goes on and on, but, um, you know, you have wide receivers who develop chemistry, um, certainly Michael Irvin, Troy, Troy Aikman, um, yeah, not to talk about the Cowboys on this channel, but, um, you know, you have these hookups, right, of, um, you know, Montana to Rice, I, I mean, I could still hear that plainly, uh, from Pat Summerall, and so what are we going to hear this year, what is going to be just you know, just rolls off the tongue is going to be Winston McLaurin. I mean, that sounds pretty good, right? Or is it going to be Winston Dotson? You know, is it going to be that Wentz has developed a more, you know, a better connection with uh, Jahan Dotson simply because Jahan has been there, uh, you know, since day one? And developing that chemistry with the wide receivers is extremely important for your quarterback's success during the season. And so being able to know exactly the tendencies of your wide receivers, when they're going to break off their routes, um, <clears throat> you know, what, how they run their routes, and, you know, exactly the tendency of the quarterback. Where is he going to place that ball? Just, you know, you guys got always, you know, the wide receiver quarterback, they got to be on the same wavelength in thinking, you know, because you want, you definitely want the receiver and that 
football to be placed in the same exact spot, right? Because if not, there's going to be an interception. There's going to be points scored the other way. So, you know, it's very important. This is like, and it's all timing based nowadays in the NFL. You don't wait for the receiver to be wide open to pass the ball to him, right? It is all about timing. It is all about ball placement. It is all about running the exact precise routes, which Terry McLaurin is one of the best wide receivers at running a precise route. He's probably one of the best route runners in the NFL that you have. We're going to take a look and see how good Josh, uh, not Josh, but <laughs> sorry, John Dotson is at route running, which I've heard he's very good and precise with his route running and certainly his catch radius. That's what we kept hearing throughout the draft, right? Catch radius, catch radius. So if the ball is not placed exactly right in the exact spot, hopefully his catch radius will help make up for any imperfections within the passing. But um, I really feel like that Dotson and Wentz may have a, a little bit more established chemistry just to simply the, the, for the fact that McLaurin hasn't been there until he finally had gotten, you know, extended on his contract. Of course, now he's here, and we all know he can make up for time. So, you know, he's he's played with so many different quarterbacks uh, that there's not going to be a problem. I mean, you know, McLaurin will adjust, and he will play well with Wentz. I mean, there's there's no two two ways about that. He's going to play very well this year. But I think there's probably going to be a little bit more of a comfort zone, at least in the beginning of the season, between Wentz and Dotson. I really think that. And I think you're, you'll probably see it earlier on. I think Dotson's going to start off hot. And I think a lot of people are going to get really excited with Jahan Dotson because, you know, he's been there the whole time. He's worked really hard. We've heard so many good things out of the minicamps OTAs about Jahan Dotson. And, you know, it's almost like a Terry McLaurin Jr., right? So um, that's my personal opinion. I think I think Dotson's going to give McLaurin a run for his money. And that's, that's just going to make McLaurin even better. Scary Terry. That's just going to be scary, right? Those two duos together, I mean, you're looking at wide receiver one, wide receiver one B. And... That could possibly be what we have this year, which is going to be so excellent. So excellent. It sounds like a Bill and Ted reference. But that's going to be great for Carson Wentz. I really think Wentz is going to have a great season this year because he's got weapons. He's got top-notch weapons to throw to. And I know I'm speaking a little ahead of time because of Dotson. Barring any type of bad injuries, you know, in the preseason, um, Wentz is going to have some good options to throw to, and he's going to have some guys who are getting healthy and toward the middle of the season that really produced for us in the past couple of seasons as well. Um, so, you know, I'm talking about Logan Thomas. Uh, he probably won't be ready at the beginning of the season, but, you know, by probably hopefully toward the middle of the season, he's going to maybe start to get back towards some sort of the, the form that he was in prior to his injury. So Wentz is going to have some options, but I really think you're going to see all of those times of the mini camps, the OTAs, and all of that paying off earlier on because we're seeing Jahan Dotson's practice. We're seeing Carson Wentz getting in there and throwing the football and, you know, creating that chemistry with, with his uh, wide receivers. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section below. Carson Wentz, I can hear it now, the late, great Pat Summerall. He's saying, Wentz to Dotson. 15-yard pass, complete first down. Commanders. Still can't get used to that. Uh, let me know in the comment section below, guys. Again, uh, thank you for watching this video. Please, again, consider subscribing to this video if you possibly can. Or, um, I'm sorry, to this channel. Like this video if you can. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know what you're thinking. Um, 
That also being said, I, j I do want to, if you want to hang on for a second, uh, those who want to, I'll give you an update on my, my uh, father. And while I'm doing that, uh, again, you know, channel has been suffering a whole lot. Um, if you want to reach out and, you know, you want to give uh, to, to help out, you can. There's my cash app. Um, feel free to give whatever you can give. You can give a dollar, that's fine. You give a hundred dollars, I'll probably love you forever. Uh, it doesn't matter. I and mean, you don't have to give money. But if you want to, that is fine. I know some people are like, how can I give? That's probably the best way to give right now. So if you want to do that, that's great. But uh, what I wanted to do, though, is I wanted to share with you an update on my dad. It's a positive update. Um, but I wanted to read to you what my brother uh, mentioned in a text yesterday. So he said, update on dad. They changed his antibiotic and it appears to have helped restore his color and responsiveness um, mom viewed this as a huge step forward. He's still stable. Uh, blood gases are good. No change seen in x-rays. Uh, my brother talked with the nurse and she said he is improving, I'll bet very slightly, uh, compared to how far he has to go. Uh, she mentioned that they would like to get him to a point to where they could send him to Duke or, or Carolina, uh, where a pulmonologist uh, could work with him directly. Uh, nurse said that dad would probably always need some breathing support if he makes it through this ordeal. Um, and my brother said he guess he kind of figured that, which that news was a little bit sobering, but he had to hear it firsthand. Um, went on to talk about how our niece has been so good with mom and supporting her and, you know, taking her to go see dad. Um, let's see. The uh, Also... Um, the nurse said, as the hole in the lung, uh, she should be able to feel and could previously feel air bubbles in the chest, which lets you know there's holes in the lung. She can no longer feel those air bubbles. That was a big positive. Um, and uh, also, they had reduced the levels of sedation they had my dad on cut off the meds they used for paralysis and that was another positive step so um, a lot of um, a lot of good things happening in that front my dad still has a long ways to go um, as, as it sounds like he could be shipped off to either Duke or um, UNC um, possibly pretty soon maybe this week who knows um, but things are looking up he's healing slowly but the good news is that he is healing. And I really appreciate all of the prayers that you guys have, have given to me and my family. Everybody I've talked to that, um, you know, are strangers to me, uh, that we just had struck up conversations and, you know, COVID became a, a point of conversation and told them about my dad. All of them left me with, I am going to pray for your dad right now. And... For those who, who believe in the power of prayer, it's working. It's definitely working. So um, I, I just I thank you so much for that. That means more than anything else, honestly. It means more than um, money. It means more than fame, obviously. I mean, it just it's great. So guys, just thank you so much for that. I really appreciate it. Um, again, it, it you know continue to pray i'm going to continue to try my best to to at least get a couple of videos out a week um trying to get back into the the swing of things here uh, because i don't want my channel to die um i really love making these videos so that being said you guys take care have a great day i will see you in the next one